people, which will fund the government. Now, you're looking at that live shot there, the Senate floor. We're waiting for a procedural vote to take place. Looks like many of the senators are still uh, out at lunch or on other breaks. And, of course, they're going to have to come back in. Will the Senate pass the bill, the funding bill that the House passed last night? That's the big question. Now, the bill the House passed did include more than $5 billion for that wall on the southern border. Here's what President Trump had to say just a short while ago. And it's really up to the Democrats, totally up to the Democrats as to whether or not we have a shutdown. Uh, it's possible that we'll have a shutdown. I would say the chances are probably very good because I don't think Democrats care so much about maybe this issue, but this is a very big issue. It's an issue of crime. It's an issue of safety. It's an issue of, of uh, least importantly, dollars. And that's where I'd like to welcome in our first guest, Stephen Rogers. Steve currently serves on the Trump 2020 Advisory Board. Great to see you. Oh, pleasure to be here. Thank you. All right. Uh, first, one, uh, I want to talk to you about the wall, but a quick question about the president. It sure looks like he outfoxed the Democrats here. Last week, Nancy Pelosi said, Mr. President, you don't have the votes. Trump again said abracadabra, delivered the votes in the House. And now, Steve, this really falls on Senate Democrats, correct? Because it looks like we have the Republican votes we need, except maybe Jeff Flake and Corker. Corker's left. But it's really fallen on the Democrats. We need nine or ten of those now. If they don't vote for it, the president's going to very effectively throw it on them, is he not? Well, he sure is. And the president has been very consistent from day one with regard to the border wall. Look, he's talking about national security. I spent my entire life in law enforcement and in military intelligence, and I know what he's talking about. He's interested in protecting the American people. Now, the Democrats, we didn't hear much from them when $1.5 billion was sent to Iran in the middle of the night on a jet. And, and, and that was to uh, help the Iranian government do whatever they wanted to do. But here we have a president who's looking out for the American people, and they're gonna balk on this, well, he has handled this brilliantly. And at the end of the day, one way or the other, that wall will be built. So, Steve, let's talk about the wall itself, because like you say, you have extensive law enforcement and military experience. Do you think five million bucks, the amount the House has appropriated, do you think five million bucks is enough? Is it a good start to build that wall and put the other layers of security we need? Well, certainly it won't be enough to build the secure wall that the president's looking at, but it's a start. It's a beginning. Uh, he will make sure that the five billion is going to be spent in the most vulnerable areas uh, between the Mexican U.S. border. Look, what they have there now, uh, obviously, people are climbing over the walls. They're digging under the walls. And not everyone coming to this country is a good person. Now, he gets criticized when he says that, but he knows what he's talking about. Criminals, uh, people in child trafficking, drug trafficking. So that wall, that money will be used uh, in areas that are most vulnerable. All right. And let me ask you something, uh, uh, Steve. Do you think the president is winning the political battle? As you and I sit here right now, a little bit after 2 p.m. Eastern, do you think the president is winning this political battle right now? Big time. He is winning the, the political battle. You know, I get that question asked all the time. You look at polls and the problem with polls is we've been through that exercise. While they're looking at the polls, we're looking at the pulse of the American people. There are even conservative Democrats that are fed up with their Democrat Socialist Party that wants the people to be enslaved to the government. President Trump is making sure that the government is going to be of the people, by the people, and for the people. All right. Now, another big win on immigration, the Trump administration has ended the catch and release policy. The, the deal that they struck will force asylum seekers to remain in their country of origin, most of them in Mexico, while their asylum cases are vetted, uh, are waiting to get to a judge being investigated by ICE. Here's how uh, Secretary uh, Kirsten Nielsen, Homeland Security Secretary Kirsten Nielsen described it, quote, once implemented, individuals arriving in or entering the United States from Mexico illegally or without proper documentation may be returned to Mexico for the duration of their immigration proceedings. This is common sense to me. I don't know if it's because I was a law enforcement guy, you were a law enforcement guy. The question to me is, why wasn't this the policy all along? Well, here's your uh, Democrat social liberal policies. 
uh, catch and release. But this is not only a big win for the American people in general, huge win for law enforcement, because a lot of these people were criminals, hardcore criminals. And unfortunately, they went out and committed vicious crimes against not only civilians, but even Border Patrol agents and police officers were killed. So the fact of the matter is, you are right. Common sense policy, but you're not dealing with a common sense party in the Democrat Socialist Party. We're not dealing with a common sense city in D.C. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Let's talk That's about uh, Secretary of Defense James Mattis leaving. A little bit of fallout there. Some people are calling it a shocking announcement, but I think there was always the speculation that when General Kelly left his chief of staff, his good friend, his Marine colleague, General Mattis might as well, might, might just leave as Secretary of Defense. Now, the optics of it, admittedly, don't look good. It looks as if Mattis is leaving because the president announced a withdrawal from Syria and declared ISIS defeated in the region. Mattis, of course, sent his letter of resignation to the White House last night. Let's read part of it here. Quote, because you have a right to have a secretary of defense whose views are better aligned with yours on these and other subjects, I believe it is right for me to step down from my position. Now, Steve, you're a former military intel officer. What was your initial reaction when you heard that General Mattis resigned? Well, he spelled it out in his letter. Uh, look, as a uh, military, when I was a subordinate to military commanders, uh, those who did, uh, I did not agree with, I certainly wouldn't come out and uh, publicly criticize them, and I would support them. In this case, Mattis felt that he could not support the president's vision, so he explained that that's why he is leaving. The media is making a mountain out of a molehill. Uh, it's time for a change. And, you know, we as military people uh, and, and those who are civilians who are appointed by the president, we're obligated to support the president's policies. He's the commander in chief. He's the guy we elected to office. And if we find that we cannot do that, as Mattis found he could not do that, he simply resigned. And that's all there is to it, as simple as that. You know, this is the argument I was having on social media today with many of the neocons. I said, what are you surprised about? Mattis was absolutely the right guy to restore morale in this military after Obama decimated it. Trump's an executive, but when we got to a point where they were ideologically too divided, Trump made an executive decision, and I think Mattis made a responsible executive decision to shake hands, part ways, and find somebody better suited to the job. To me, it really is that. There's really not much controversy behind it. You're exactly right. It's like a change of command in the military. You, you do it the, uh, uh, right, you do it proper, you do it with dignity and with grace, and both the president and Mattis handled this very, very well. It's yeah, the mainstream I, I, media making this a big issue. I thought they did as well. I thought it was handled like gentlemen. All right, let's uh, listen to what White House Press Secretary Sarah Huckabee Sanders had to say. Um, Secretary Mattis has served the president and with the president for two years. They have a good relationship. I've seen it up close and personal on a number of occasions. And again, they agree to disagree at times, but that doesn't mean you can't have a good relationship with somebody. He was laying out the reasons that he was uh, stepping down from his post. And um, beyond that, I think it's absurd to try to question sure. So, Steve, want to get your reaction to Sarah Huckabee Sanders' comments and also your opinion on the president pulling out of Syria, good move or bad move? A good move on Syria, and I'll tell you why. Once again, President Trump, by no surprise, did this. He said from the beginning that the United States military is not in the business of nation building. We've got 2,000 troops there. What are we doing there? Look, the experts told us we should stay in Afghanistan. We're still there. The experts told us we should stay way back in Vietnam. And look what happened there. So the experts don't have all the answers. And let me add this. If you look at the history of the FDR, his first eight years in office, he, is, he went through what President Trump is going through now. FDR was condemned by his own party because he wouldn't listen to experts with regard to his policies. President's doing the right thing. All right. Well, of course, Democrat Senate leader Chuck Schumer does not agree with Press Secretary Sanders. Let's listen to Schumer. Secretary Mattis was one of the few symbols, the few items of strength and stability in this administration. Everything that indicates stability, everything that indicates strength, everything that indicates knowledge is leaving this administration. General Kelly, General Mattis, so many others. McMaster. At McMaster, exactly. There is chaos now in this administration. 
Your reaction to Schumer, Steve? <laughs> well, let's talk about strength and stability in the president of the United States. The economy is strong. The military is strong. Uh, things are going very well in this country with regard to the quality of life of people. So there's a lot of stability. Chuck Schumer and the Democrat socialists it will do anything to uh, condemn the president of the United States. It is the president and the people he does have around him, although some may disagree, that is bringing strength and stability to the United States of America. Steve, real quick, because I have a hard 20 seconds for you. What do you think happens with Mueller in the new year? He's going to go. He's going to go. I think uh, uh, no Russia collusion. He did not achieve the goal he was supposed to uh, achieve. He's on a big fishing expedition that's going to come to an end. Steve Rogers, Trump 2020 Advisory Board. Have a great Christmas. Merry Christmas, Steve. Great to see Merry you. Merry Christmas. Thank you. Coming up, what exactly is going on inside the halls of Congress?